All right, here we go. Uh, welcome back, CSU baseball fans. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I stuck it over here. Hello, Bakersfield fans, and welcome back to part three of our Zoom interview series as a part of our countdown to joining the Big West Conference on July 1st. Tonight, we're joined by three members of the CSUB baseball team, uh, the 2015 team, in fact, which racked up a program best 37 wins, advanced the Constellation bracket to win the WAC tournament uh, with back-to-back -back wins over Seattle University, and earned the conference's at-large bid to the NCAA tournament and the UCLA regional, uh, where they captured the program's first win over an NCAA tournament opponent in Ole Miss. Uh, we're joined today by the 2015 WAC Pitcher of the Year, Hayden Carter, uh, 2015 First Team All-WAC Selection and the MVP of that WAC tournament, David Metzger, and All-WAC Infielder, Miles Jones. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Before we get started uh, with our look back on that season and the seasons that led up to it, let's just take a minute. Let's hear a little bit about what you guys are up to now. Uh, Hayden, we'll start with you. As mentioned, you were the pitcher of the year that season. Uh, you won nine games, including the opener of the WAC championship. You started the championship game that year, uh, and you pitched a complete game in the team's win over Ole Miss in the NCAA tournament. Uh, what have you been up to since uh, that season, and how did your time at CSUB help you get to where you are today? Yeah, um, so I'm still in still in baseball. I'm coaching. I'm now the the pitching coach and I guess info uh, recruiting coordinator for Palomar Junior College. It's a JC down in San Marcos. It's about I think four hours south of Bakersfield. Uh, this will be this upcoming year will be my fourth year um, with Palomar, and then I'm also the field manager for the Coke Jackrabbits. They're a summer collegiate team. Um, affiliated with the Northwoods League out in the Midwest and in the um, northern part of the U.S. Um, and then, yeah, that's that's basically all. I'm still in baseball. Um, get enough of it after I stop playing. Great. Sounds good. Uh, Miles, uh, we'll move on to you. You were drafted at the end of that 2015 season by the Colorado Rockies. Uh, what's been your career path since then, and how did playing at CSUB help you transition to professional baseball? Um, so yeah, I'm still, uh, with the Rockies. It's been just about every year I went up a level. I repeated double A last year. So that was my second year, um, playing in Hartford, but being at Bakersfield prepared me, uh, probably the best at any university could, I think, especially under Kernan. Um, as a lot of the players know when you're playing under Kernan, you're pretty much playing under pressure throughout the whole fall. So going into pro ball, there's, literally no pressure at least from my standpoint because like when you're playing in fall ball at CSUB uh, uh, if your scrimmages aren't going right you're going to run for like 30 to 45 minutes after a game so going into pro ball <laughs> knowing after what I've been through is not nothing's going to put any pressure on me after that so I'd say coming from CSUB uh, pretty much learning how to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations uh, pretty much has played a big role in my career this this far. I am curious as a New England fan myself, and you coming from California, how have you enjoyed playing in Hartford? I'm sure early season, late season, sometimes the weather is not what you're used to. Yeah, I hated playing in Hartford in April and early May. It was <laughs> brutal. Um, we've had a few games where it was like, I think it might have been under 30 degrees and it felt like 20. It was unbelievable, but come like eight, uh, not April come June it's really nice June to pretty much the rest of the season it's really nice and then the stadiums there's like three years older so it's pretty much brand new I heard that is a great stadium uh, 30 degrees that's definitely not baseball weather yeah not at all David uh, you were the MVP of that tournament as mentioned during your sophomore season um, and recently the conference honored you as the league leader in base hits during that decade or this past decade uh, how did your time at CSUB help put you in a position where a couple years after that season, you signed with the Yankees? Uh, and what has your experience been over the last couple of years? Uh, CSUB helped me uh, a lot. You know, I, I didn't 
have a place to go after high school or like my senior year of high school and CSUB was the only school that, you know, kind of showed interest in me. And, you know, even though we didn't have the best facilities or nothing like that, that just, that just groomed me to have mental toughness because we didn't have a lot of things that other guys had. We had a hidden dirt and stuff like that. So, um, you know, and that helped because when you go to pro ball, you know, you got everything for you and it's pretty much handed to you. You got nice facilities, you got good food, you got, you got everything. So, um, but under the coaching, I have played under three coaches and, you know, Coach Beard and Kernan were, were, my, were my best coaches there. They helped me, Kernan gave me the, you know, the, the, the mental toughness because of the pressure we had to go under, as Miles was saying. And, and Beard brought in a couple of old professional players who would help us um, learn what they, they learned when they were playing pro ball. So that, that helped out a lot because by the time I got to pro ball, you know, I had a little head, I was ahead of uh, the other people, I should say. What was that transition like for you, uh, not being drafted, signing as a free agent? Do you notice any difference in that process or you know, what your matriculation into the organization was at that stage? Um, yeah, it was hard because I, I thought I was going to be drafted because I had a good um, college career. And not being drafted, you know, it was tough, tough on me. So, I, But I just kept working out after that because – you never know, I guess, with the free agent signings. And then the Yankees called me, took me out there, worked me out, and signed me that day. So that was that was um, pretty cool. But it was it was it was nothing different after not getting drafted. Just other than that, I was pretty upset. But I, you know, I I kept working and everything. And um, yeah, going there, I didn't know what to expect, like as a as a player with my role in the organization, because. You know, the Yankees have a lot of guys and everything, and I was a free agent signing. And professional baseball is a business, so I didn't really know what to expect from where, what, I'm, what my role was going to be. But, you know, it turned out to be a utility player, and uh, that, that was fine with me. That's a great story. Uh, congratulations on sticking with it and finding a way. Thank you. All right. We do have one more player joining us today from the 2015 CSUB baseball team, uh, Ryan Grotejohn. Ryan, um, you were also selected in the Major League Baseball draft, but not until 2017 when Arizona chose you in the 10th round. Uh, how has your career progressed since uh, you left CSUB, and, and how did the school prepare you uh, for professional baseball? Um, I mean, it's been a journey, that's for sure. Um, Coach Beard was an awesome, awesome coach. And um, I know I speak for a lot of the other guys too, that he really helped us um, as a team and me as a player. And, and I'm sure David can attest to it um, as a player. Um, but as far as pro ball, I mean, it's been a whirlwind. Um, I bounced around a couple different levels, um, got a couple rings along the way, which is awesome. Um, I finished last season, or started last season in high, went up to uh, double A and uh, both our high and double A team won a championship. So I got two rings last year, which was pretty exciting, but uh, it's been fun. I mean, it's been a journey. It's, um, it's exhausting and tiring, but I, I mean, I wouldn't change it for the world. Great. Congratulations on last season. That's, that's a pretty exciting year for sure. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Speed on what all you guys have been up to since leaving CSUB. Let's dive right into your time on campus. Um, you know, I think sometimes it's easy to forget that CSU Bakersfield only began its program in 2009. Um, so even when you guys were making your run in 2015, the program was still in its early days. Uh, Hayden, you were the first of the four to commit to CSUB. Uh, you joined the program in 2012. Um, what was your recruiting process like and what attracted you to Bakersfield in a program you know, that was so new relative to some of the others you probably could have attended? Um, the recruiting process was super late. Um, I was, I was set to go to Palomar Junior College, um, the, the school that I'm coaching at now. And I was all, I was enrolled in classes. Um, I, it was two or three weeks before classes were supposed to start. And I remember I was at one of my buddy's house and we were playing FIFA and my high school coach, Cal State Bakersfield is interested in you. 
and I was for, honestly first first thought I I didn't know Cal State Bakersfield was a school. I didn't know they had a baseball program, and I didn't know they had a one program. So I was like, oh cool, like yeah, let's let's do it. Um, so I ended up talking to Coach Kernan over the phone. Uh, my and I drove up to meet with them, and that was before the the stadium was even built. Um, they used to roll in portable like chair seats and they didn't have even have those in. So it was just kind of like a gravel lot. Um, and we talked, it was coach Kernan, me and my dad, and then Robin, we stood on the berm on the first base side. And I actually, the day before my visit, I had wisdom teeth removed. And so I was on like a ton of panelers and I don't really remember too much of the visit. I just remember um like it was super hot um we took a walk around campus we met with Corey Costello for a little bit um like ate lunch at Togo's I don't even is Togo's still a restaurant on campus still I heard they got panned in there so I don't think so no but uh but yeah it was kind of I honestly don't really remember too much about um and then after the visit I was still for some reason I still wanted to go to Palomar um, but then like a week later, Coach Kernan on a visit gave us a, or gave me the, the schedule for the 2012 team. And we we're in an independent team at the time. So we could just play whoever. And, and that schedule that year was low. We started the year against Kansas state. We went to like NC state, Washington, um, Nebraska, like a bunch of California power, like USC. And like, these are all the schools that I wanted to go to growing up that just basically overlooked me um and so i was like let's like now was my chance to to kind of prove them wrong and show them that they that they missed on me and so that was that was one of the main deciding factors that that drove me towards csub um and then literally the day before classes started at palomar i called coach kernan in the in a parking lot olive garden because i made a decision at an olive garden talking to my dad and my grandma um and then uh, i called coach kern and i was i, I want to come to csb and he's like, all right cool and then two weeks later we started school and i was i was starting classes there so kind of a kind of a crapshoot to say the least i mean it was it all happened super quick and it was very um and yeah, I don't even think Coach Kernan saw me play. Like he just went off a recommendation of my high school coach, and he was just like, "Yeah, let's let's do it." So, um, kind of a kind of a weird process, to the least. It's a great story. That seems to be the norm. Things happen quickly, and and they never seem to happen in a straight line. Uh, Miles, you joined the team a year later uh, as a recruit with some real potential. You were the freshman All American uh, selection that season. Um, what attracted you, you to the program? Again, a, still a relatively new program, proving itself. Um, but your freshman year, the team had a great season. You won 30 games, won the regular season title. Uh, when you came to CSUB, did you expect that immediate success to demand for yourself? Um, and what was the process in you getting to CSUB? Um, so, honestly, the same, like uh, Hayden said, I didn't know CSUB was a university at the time. And when Kernan called me, um, I, I think I went out. He called me like when I was taking my SATs, um, trying to get my scores in. So right around that, and then I went out to a practice. And when we were driving up, I was like, I had no idea there was a school back here. Um, but yeah, like Hayden said, I went in. There was no stadiums yet, because I think they put those in my freshman year, right before the season started. So I went to a practice. There, there weren't even the rollouts yet, because they rolled the, rolled the portables out right before the season started so I went out talked with Kernan in the dugout was watching the practice and everything and then it was I got a tour from J-Mo and Chuck J-Mo Chuck and Van Dam, and Brandon Van Dam's actually from the Antelope Valley so knowing that there was someone from the AV up there already um kind of helped persuade the decision a little bit knowing that hey there'll be someone up here that I can at least relate to being from the Antelope Valley Granted, he was a fifth-year senior, senior when I was a freshman, so didn't talk much, but it was still um, good to know that somebody was up in Bakersfield in the AV. Um, but, yeah, after my tour, I wanted to sign right away. I wanted to uh, get that out of the way going into my senior year, know that, hey, I'm 
I know what school I'm going to. I don't have to stress during the season or worry about any of that stuff. And then I remember the day I went up to a game, they were playing Santa Cruz and the other coach, I think, was it Maine? I think it was Coach Maine. He was there. Yeah, Coach Maine. <laughs> yeah, Coach Maine. So he was, I met him when I went to the game and he was like, hey, come in the dugout. I was like, wait, what? This was, it was like the third inning and I was wearing a bright pink shirt. He's like, come in the dugout. So I opened the door and everybody's up on the railing and the whole team just stares at me. And I'm just, I feel so out of place. Um, <laughs> but I talked to Coach Maine and Kernan for a little bit with it, uh, during that inning. And that was pretty much my process getting there. And then once I got there, my freshman year, a story I like to tell is my first impression was we had like a team meeting before the season starts. And I didn't know what the meeting was going to be. I just literally thought it was going to be a meeting in the clubhouse. We talked for like an hour, introduced ourselves and leave. It was like the exact opposite. Like I showed up wearing Jordans thinking we were like just going to chill. And 15 minutes in, we're having pretty much a boot camp at the meeting for like an hour and I'm just having a boot camp in Jordans and I don't think I had like cargo shorts on like I wasn't prepared at all and I remember because I rode my bike there so I was riding my bike back home at like 11 I was like I have my first day of class and this was my first day here and I was just thinking about how hard the fall was going to be but um expectation wise going into this season um, I obviously I had confidence going in, but I wasn't expecting to um, do as much as I did. But once you start playing and you realize you belong, you start building that confidence. So as season goes on, I'm like, hey, I, I do belong here. I'm able to compete at the highest level of college baseball, and the confidence just kept rolling throughout the whole season. And once you have confidence, like baseball, like everyone says, 90% mentality. So once you get that confidence rolling, there's nothing that can really stop you. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Uh, David and Ryan, uh, you were both in the 2014 season. Uh, so the program still relatively new, but you were able to see the team have success in 2013. Um, what was your process to get here? And, and after watching the 2013 season, were you convinced uh, you, know, you were coming to a program that had the talent uh, to compete for WAC championships and NCAA trips? And David, we'll start with you. Um. The process wasn't too hard for me because <laughs> it was the only school interested in me. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. It's a Division One school. It's an hour 15 from home. And I went to high school with Miles and Malik and, and played with Chance when I was younger. So, you know, that was a easy – that was a no-brainer for me. I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm going to go to Bakersfield. Even though when Miles signed, I was like, Bakersfield? Like, in high school, you're like, Miles is the GOAT. <laughs> so, I was like, why, why are you going to Bakersfield? <laughs> what, what is but then uh, after being there, you know, I, I realized, like, you know, that's a, that's a really good school and they're a really good program. So now I see why he chose that. And, and you know, the, su the success for them that they had, uh, I think 2013, right? Yep. Um, I went to a couple games and – it was opening season, and they beat USC and Nebraska the first two games. So I mean, you got a you got a, a small Division One beating teams like that, and that that's that's all you that's all you really need because it just shows that you don't have the biggest and strongest guys, but you have guys that are are, are grinders, and that that's pretty much why I went there too because I'm a small guy, and I, so I fit in perfectly there. Brian, how about you? Yeah, I mean, on point with Dave, what he said, I mean, there were a lot of grinders that went there. Um, I had family in Bakersfield, and I was actually born in Bakersfield. My parents were the high school there, so I knew about Bakersfield. Um, and some of the people, like family friends that I knew from there, spoke real highly of Bakersfield and said they're an up-and-coming program and all this. So, um, ultimately, it was, a, it was a good decision for me. I had some family. I had family friends there. It was closer to home. Um, and I mean, it was just a great program coming up. So it was, uh, fun to be around. That's for sure. <laughs> so now you're all on campus in 2014, you're coming off a 37 win season and a whack regular season title in 2013. I would imagine expectations heading into that 2014 season miles were pretty high. Um, 
And did you feel like that season was in any way kind of a, an underperformance or a disappointment, um, you know, from the standpoint of expectation? Uh, yeah, we all wanted to obviously do just as well as we did the year before, especially coming off regular season. And then, honestly, the way the bracket was set up our freshman year in the WAC tournament, we all felt like we got screwed over because we were two and all or something, lost one game and we were done. So we all had that fire to want to go into the next season and prove everyone wrong that we decided or that we deserved to be in the tournament. But, yeah, I mean, it didn't go as planned as part. Pretty much the whole year wasn't how we expected it to be, but we grew a lot as a collective group for the most part. The whole team came back to 2015. Um, but, yeah, I remember half – I think it was just about halfway through, our, through that 2014 year, we were – we were struggling pretty bad, and we went up to Kansas State. And if you want to talk about pressure, that year we had – we were doing a point, seat, point system throughout the fall. And we go to Kansas State, and we've been struggling throughout the year. And Kieran goes, hey, we're going to do a point system this series. And it was only two, two games. And he says, we're going to do a point system. If you're in a negative, you're not going to play it again. <laughs> <laughs> so we had two games pretty much pull up and have a positive series. And there were guys who were only getting two at bat. So they you know, played every day. So I think I got close to seven or something, seven or eight at bats. We had players that weren't playing every day who only had two chances to be positive. And I mean, everyone did it. So this theory worked. Like, we just had to want it bad enough. Um, but yeah, throughout the whole year, it didn't go as planned, but we learned a lot. And that point system kept us gave us the confidence going into that next season and knowing that, hey, we literally just work hard and put our mind to it and just competed. It pretty much just came down to competing. And when we were able to do that our 2015 year as a collective group, it, uh, it really took off for us. Yeah, great. Uh, thanks for that insight. Uh, Hayden, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the WAC tournament that season. Um, despite a tough season with the success you had had the year before, um, you still have gone into that tournament feeling pretty good about what you could accomplish in a short weekend. Um, you did start with two wins, so you seem to be on that track, um, and then you lost two straight to the season. But I want to talk to you about that last game of the um, You pitched against Sacramento State in that elimination game. You threw a complete game. You allowed just three runs, six hits. Uh, so you pitched very well. How would you describe the experience of pitching in an elimination game like that? Um, and how do you feel afterwards you know, when the season ends despite such a strong performance? Uh, I mean, leading up to it, uh, just because all the games happen, like in our first two games in two days, and then all of a sudden, like two days later, we're in an elimination game. And um, so, I mean, it kind of goes a little quick. Uh, but I think – Leading into the game, I mean, I was fired up. I, I wanted to make sure that we could play another game. I think if we won that game, we were we needed to play or need to beat Utah Valley twice. Um, I think that was the team that that Sac State had to beat. But um, yeah, I mean, I I was fired up. I was I was ready to go. I'd kind of I'd kind of done well going up going into the the conference tournament, so I had more confidence. Um, leading into that that game um and then as far as like after the performance i think coach kernan had already announced his retirement and so it was kind of a cool thing um like after i finished the last inning and um i walked off the field like coach kernan gave me a hug and he was like oh it's it's fitting that um my last game coaching is a complete game and i was just like oh okay like cool um, and he was like, oh, well, next year is going to be your year. And, um, I, that, that was kind of cool. Um, and then as far as like, I mean, it sucks when you lose. I thought that, I mean, we had a, we had a really good team that I thought, I mean, we didn't, we had, we had the infield year, I think was probably the best infield at like with miles at third, Oscar at short, Dave at first, and then or the day second gentleman before we got hurt hurt was at first like I'd basically like like Grachon and all those guys that were that were from that 2013 team like we we had a good team and so coming up short 
Um, I got, I got a pitching staff good with Aikenhead and, and Davis and Baragon. Um, so, like, I thought we had a real chance of winning that if we just got in and won a couple games. So, it's sucked. Um, I mean, a couple weeks later, I'm sure I had a positive um, outlook on the experience and on the game heading into the next year. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it was a good experience. It was kind of cool for Kernan's first retirement to kind of – lead out on a complete game um you would have liked to have won that game in that tournament obviously but i mean i guess um good experience altogether are you touched on on coach kernan uh, making the retire after that season um he did eventually reverse course uh when he looked at the roster you guys had coming back in 2015 the disappointment of 2014 and understanding what you guys were capable of accomplishing in 2015 probably played a major role in that decision. Um, David, how would you describe the team's mindset uh, after that 2014 season? And when do you turn the page and look ahead uh, to reproving yourself um, for the season to come? Um, during the season, our mindset, and I was, I think we were all kind of scared because of all the stuff we went through for Kernan. And like Miles was saying, that Kansas State uh, series, I've never experienced anything like that. You got um, guys who you never see upset or mad, um, you know, being getting kind of like shaky in the dugout because they get one more at bat and they're at zero points if they strike out or something, you know. It's, uh, yeah, they're not playing again, as Kernan said. So, but, you know, it was – it was a learning experience for all of us, and um, we, you know, we were able to overcome that thing. I think everyone was positive, but um, you know, after the season, I think you know it, it's it's because it's different. You if you're going from going to school and playing baseball every day to only going to school, so you kind of feel like, you know, what am, what's what's going on? It's it, it, it's a different scene. So, but you'll get, you get used to that. So it's only like a couple of weeks after that, after the season that, you know, you get over it. Cause now you got summer coming and you got, you got, um, summer baseball. We're all going to different places and, you know, trying to do the best we can in summer baseball. Cause there's pro scouts and stuff there. So it, it's, it's not much after the season that people, you know, finally, you know, change their mindset about what happened in the tournament. Uh, Ryan, uh, Hayden touched on the depth of the infield in 2014, and, and you kind of put a, a little bit of a smaller role your freshman season at CSU. Uh, what were your thoughts looking ahead to the 2015 season, knowing now this is your opportunity to play every day and be a big part of things moving forward? Uh, I mean, I was excited. I, um, I didn't know if I was going to get to play sophomore year. Um, I kind of went into it like I got to prove myself. Um, Freshman year was a big learning experience. Um, I learned a lot from Oscar. I learned a lot from Miles, Hayden, um, David, all those guys. Um, so I came into the sophomore year season feeling pretty good, ready to go, um, trying to prove something. Um, and I know it felt like that around the whole team. I think everyone on the team was like, okay, you know, we have a good team. We're ready to prove something. And everyone kind of had a little chip on their shoulder in it, in it, in it showed. Um, so it was, a uh, it was a real, I think everyone had a lot of confidence going in. I know myself personally, so it was, it was good. It really was. Hayden, do you agree with that? You were a senior now heading into the 2015 season. So, um, what would you describe the mindset of the team as entering that year? And, and what were your goals and expectations knowing now you're a real leader, not just in the rotation, but in the team as a whole, and this is your last chance. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the team knew that this was going to be Kernan's last year. So I think the expectation and the goal was it's an NCAA tournament. I think um, that was, that was the bottom line. That's what, that's what we wanted to do. I think the overall mindset was, was more business-like. Like we knew what needed to be done and what had to be um, honest. In like the four years I was there, that was probably the easiest fall just because like Miles said that, his freshman year, my sophomore year, that was, that was, uh, that was tough. Um, and then the next year, um, I mean, my freshman and junior year, all the falls were tough, but the senior, my, my senior year in 2015, 
um, it was kind of, it was more player driven. Like we, we had a ton of older guys, sophomores, younger guys at back. They were mature for, for their age and their grade level. So, I mean, we really didn't need to be coached. Um, like they just provided a structure and we kind of ran with it. We policed ourselves for the most part. Um, we had a lot of vocal guys like, like Logan Trowbridge and Jordy Hine that, that took like all the stuff that needed to be taken care of. Um, and then, I mean, with myself, leadership standpoint, I don't really feel like I was much of a vocal leader. Um, I tried to be more of a like, lead by example type of guy. Um, just because we had vocal guys and I mean, you really don't need that many cooks in the kitchen, from a leadership perspective. So, um, as we hadn't played, um, were good enough to lead. I just led by example. And, um, yeah, it was kind of, it was regional or bust to be honest. That was the expectation to that fall, at least for me. Miles, you do enter this season with confidence, with high expectations. Um, you start the year getting swept at home by Creighton. Um, a week later, you lose to Arizona State. You fall to three and six. Was there some concern over a slow start, or is that just baseball being baseball? Uh, no, it's just baseball being baseball. I mean, it's what a long season, so we we didn't want to start off getting swept, especially at home <laughs> against a team coming from. Where it's creating Nebraska, where it's cold and they haven't, or, yeah, they haven't been outdoors, and they come in in Bakersfield and shut us down. I remember specifically, like we had like ten strikeouts, oh, maybe two or three games or something like that. But we weren't concerned over the first two series. I mean, yeah, it was tough, but um, we knew what the end goal was. We knew it was a long season, and like uh, Hayden said, throughout the whole fall, my our junior or my junior year we pretty much had our expectations from ourselves. Like we knew where we needed to be. Um, we had guys, like he said, Jordy Hine, even Chance. Chance was very vocal. Um, we knew what we needed to do to get ourselves in place to pretty much compete at the highest level as a team. So after the first little start, we kind of collectively like regrouped as a team, but um, we knew what we needed to do and how to compete to pretty much get to where we ended up at the end of the year. You lost to Arizona State that day. They were ranked ninth in the country. The next day, uh, you beat Gonzaga to open the day, and then you do knock off Arizona State, a top 10 team, um, with a three-run rally in the ninth. Uh, Ryan, you had an RBI single in that ninth inning. Um, what do you remember about that game, uh, that moment? <laughs> that really served as a springboard for the team moving forward um i mean that was towards the beginning of the season and uh i mean everyone had super high expectations i mean we didn't know what we were going to get into yet but i think going into that series um and that weekend tournament um they really gave us a lot of confidence i know i felt after that win um because in the next day we played purdue and won in extras i think it was or in the ninth inning and i think it really kind of showed that we're not going to quit. Um, I think it showed we had a lot of fight in us. Um, it really kind of banded us together and showed us, hey, we can we can beat these teams. You know, we have the, the ability to come out there and play and beat any team on any given day. And I think that led into um, the start of, of conference play when we played New Mexico State and, and, um, and so forth. And it just kind of gave us a lot of confidence and showed us that, you know, we, we can do this, you know. After that win, sweeping that day against Gonzaga and Arizona State, uh, you guys ended up winning eight of nine. Um, you closed out that season with 20 wins in your last 27. Um, Hayden, what do you remember about that season when things were going good uh, for you guys? And how did those streaks and extended success like that impact your confidence when you head into the postseason? Um, yeah, I mean – it sucks about the whack. Like, you, you know that you have to win the conference tournament to make it to the NCAA tournament. So, I mean, it puts a lot of pressure on that. But having the success that we had with winning most of the series, I think we only lost, like, two conference series that, that year. So, um, knowing that we did really well against these teams that we would have to beat in the conference tournament definitely gave us a lot of confidence going into 
um, the conference tournament. And as far as like what I remember, um, I mean, it was just, I mean, it was fun. It was just kind of on a roll. It was like, we took one game at a time. Um, I, to be honest, I don't really remember too much about like the, the actual winning streaks. I just remember the, it was like a three hour meeting that we had. I think after we played Utah Valley and we were like a couple games below 500 and, um, basically we're just like, dude, we didn't, we didn't grind for a couple of months just to not play well and be like a, a fifth place team in the whack. Um, we knew we were better than that. Um, and I think, I mean, that, that, after that meeting, I mean, we, that's been when we started playing well. Um, but as far as like the winning streaks, I think we just kind of took one game at a time. And after each win, it just felt like a snowball effect. Like we, we beat Seattle two out of three, we beat Saxony two out of three, and then we beat all these other teams for the most part. And I think it just kind of built a ton of momentum heading into the conference tournament. You get to the conference tournament, Hayden, you throw a complete game um, in game one, an 11 to one win over North Dakota. Uh, David, you had a pair of RBIs that day. Uh, so you're off to a good start, but the next day, you know, you do lose to a Seattle team that you had taken two or three from in the regular season. Uh, David, when you lose early in an elimination tournament like that, the road obviously gets much more difficult. You've got to play more games. Um, what's the team mindset um, when you do lose that second game? You know you have to fight out of a loser's bracket. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it sucks because you're like, dang, man, now we got to play all these games in a row to try to get to the championship game and then beat the – then you got to beat that guy, the, that team twice. But, um, you know, we were a strong team. Our, our, our mentality was real strong. Um, you know, Kernan helped us with that. And it, it really wasn't a, a crazy deal for us because we knew what we had to do. And that whole year, like Hayden said, we we're all about business. I think that was the year we wore, what was that, suits to the airport and all that? Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah exactly. So that year was all business. So Fresh. We, we knew what we had to do. We knew you know, the things we had to take care of. And, you know, we were able to do that because of the strong mentality that we had. The next day you are coming from the bottom half of the bracket. You needed two wins to stay alive. Uh, you open that day with a 4 nothing win over Sacramento State. Another complete game from your starting pitcher, this time Stephen G. Um, Miles, can you talk about the pitching staff you had that season? Uh, you had three frontline starters with e under, ERAs under three. Uh, you tossed 15 complete games that season, which is just something you don't see much of anymore. Um, how does having a staff like that that can throw deep in games really kind of make things much easier when you are fighting from that bottom half of the bracket? Um, it gives the whole team a bunch of confidence. Um, for us as a, pretty much the position players, we knew our staff was going to go seven plus innings a game. Um, especially me, that was my third year, so I knew how Kernan liked to work. So I, like, I wasn't surprised when our guys were going CGs, but the best part of it is being on defense, um, especially when you have Hayden on the mound. Um, I loved playing behind him because he, like, for the most part, he threw a lot of strikes. Kernan was big on the strike zone. But playing behind Hayden, G, and Barry Gons, um, I remember one game at home, Hayden was starting to short. And when you have a staff that's just pounding the zone and throwing strikes, it keeps one your defense um, alert the whole game. And we're just ready for everything. And there's like as a defender, you don't want your pitchers up there and walk guys are being out of the zone because you just get lax of days go every now and then. Next thing you know, you make an error. Um, <clears throat> so when you have a staff up there that's pounding the strike zone and working, and their tempo was unbelievable. It, I know it kept the other hitters um, uncomfortable. And with that tempo and then us being on defense ready for everything, it meshed perfectly for our play style. And then next thing you know, we're out of the inning in five minutes and we're hitting and we're back to putting pressure on, on their defense. So our staff was unbelievable that year. Uh, like you said, our ERA was way below. Uh, I bet what a lot of people expect, but we knew we were going to get our guys in they uh, outperformed all the people who didn't think we had the stuff to get to. Yeah, it was a really impressive for that staff. And, and that complete game win over Sacramento State, that gives you a rematch now against Seattle. 
um, with the win to force a deciding game the next day. Uh, Ryan, you fell behind in this game again a few times, uh, battled back a couple times, and then Seattle takes a two-run lead in the top of the ninth. Um, you talked a little bit earlier about some of the come from behind extra inning wins you had. Um, you know, how did those moments prepare you for this opportunity? And is there any doubt going through your team's mind that you're going to come back and tie this game and eventually win? Uh, I mean, no, I, I mean, I didn't have any doubt. I don't think anyone on our team had any doubt. I don't even think the fans had doubt. Um, we had so many times throughout that season where we came back from, from, whether that's in the ninth, the sixth, the seventh, whatever it was. Um, so we, I mean, we knew that we, we could do it. I mean, we played so many good teams that year and, and beat so many good teams and came back from different wins. Um, it was just having the confidence and putting it in action. And uh, fortunately we did. Um, I think everyone was in the same boat. There's so many emotions going around, um, nervous and anxious and, I think I blacked out at one point. I don't even know. But uh, it was it was an incredible time. I think we had so much confidence going into it. And I think those previous games helped us in those times. Um, we were able to slow the game down and, and do what we could do. David, what do you remember from that game? Uh, you had an RBI ground out in the ninth inning to get that rally going. Um, and you did have a number of comebacks that season. Uh, is the ability to come from behind something a team has to learn? Is it something a team can learn? Or does it just say a lot about the character you had at the clubhouse that season? Yeah, I think it is something a team has to learn and can be learned. Uh, me personally, I've never, uh, going into Bakersfield, I never, you know, been part of a team that was has been able to come back like that or even, you know, had the confidence in myself to be like, all right, we're going to, we're going to come back right now because at the end of the day, there's, there's two different things you can say when you're down, you can say, Oh, we can do this or we're going to do it. And going to Bakersfield, I, um, I learned that mentality that we are going to get this done or I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get this big hit. And the chances of that happening are, are way higher when you think like that versus thinking, you know, passively like, ah, oh, we can do it. We can do it. So, you know, it's, it's something that can be learned for sure. And, you know, I think that that mentality definitely helped me in my career. Now, Miles, you come back, you tie that game in the ninth, you win it in the tenth. You're headed back to the hotel, knowing you've got a winner-take-all game the next day. Um, where are you guys at this point? Your confidence must be through the roof. Yeah, honestly, I think as a team, we knew we were going to win the next day. Like that was their only shot of making it and they blew it. So for us going into the hotel, we knew even if we came, I think we were behind to start the game, but we knew it didn't matter what was going to happen. We were going to find a way to win. We found a way to win that game down two in the ninth and we went on a walk off walk. <laughs> we're lose the next day. Hayden, did you know uh, that night you were going to get the start in the championship game uh, after pitching just two days earlier? Um, and I want to go back to that game you threw in the 2014 season against Sacramento State um, in an elimination game. Uh, how does having that experience the year before help you heading into this start? Yeah, um, I, I did know. I, me and Coach Kernan talked about it the day before we played North Dakota. I said, hey, if you start this game, uh, I'm going to bring, I'm going to try to bring you back the Sunday um against who we would play in the championship game um so I, yeah i knew um and then as far as the previous year um yeah i mean i guess i guess that that kind of just calmed the nerves um i had i had pitched well against seattle that year um before when we played them at home so that was that was more of a confidence builder compared to the the previous year's conference tournament um, and then as far as like expectations, I mean, you, as far as like pitch count and stuff like that, you don't under coach Kern, you don't have a pitch count. So you just go until he takes the ball from you. <laughs> um, and that was like the one time my career was actually tired. Like I was exhausted, um, in that last game. I don't even, I think it went like five or six. I don't, I don't remember. I just remember that last, 
like couple of pitches. I was just out there like, man, I am exhausted. Um, I think Kernan that, so I think he was just like, yeah, just go as long as you want or as long as you can. Um, and then just give us the best chance to win. He ended up going five and a third that day. Uh, that was your official. Okay. Um, Seattle got you a little bit in the second. They scored three. Um, when you're in a, such an important game like that, um, what do you say to yourself uh, to keep yourself in the game, keep your team in the game? You were able to uh, kind of stop the bleeding, and you held them two, three runs over five and a third, gave your, chance, uh, gave your team a chance to win that game. Yeah, I mean, right away, not the happiest of thought, giving up a three spot in the second. Um, yeah, I mean, I was I was pissed right away, but I kind of kind of like what Miles said, and kind of all alluded to over the course of the season. We like we we won so many games where we had to come back from pretty deficits. Like I think I had talked about the Purdue game where I don't remember how many how many runs were down, but I just remember we we put on a huge come. So. Uh, but yeah, I think most of us, and myself included, are all, my mind after on and getting and then the dugout was all right. Just got to keep it at three, give the club, um, and that was the it. I thought I had confidence that we were going to be able to to figure it out offensively, score some runs. And Kernan's thing was all right. If you if you score five, we'll be able to win. And I think I think we gave up four runs. I, I'm not sure, but um, but yeah, I think if I kept it at three, um, I knew that we we'd have a chance to to win. You're right. You did give up four runs that day. You traded runs in the seventh, I believe. Now you're into the eighth inning. You're still trailing four to one. Miles, um, team still confident at this point, or does doubt start to creep in? No, we're still, we're still confident. I mean, obviously it sucks that we're running out of time to uh, get the job done. But like Hayden said, like Kernan always preached, if, you, if our pitching staff keeps it under five, you guys should be able to get a W. So we knew confidence-wise, especially coming off the game, that last game, we knew we were never no matter what the score was. Now you come to the plate in that eighth inning, the bases are loaded. Um, what do you remember about that at bat, who you were facing? What are your thoughts watching the plate? And then what's your reaction when you end up doubling to clear the base inside of score? I know they made a to bring in, I don't remember, I think it was Dyers. I don't remember his name. But I know he had long hair and we faced him earlier in the year. And he liked to throw a lot of change ups. And I'm on deck. I forget who was behind me. I was like, I'm just going to literally sit change up because he's going to throw to that. He had a lot of success against us using it and there he threw and I was already ready for it and I hit it down the line and obviously I was I didn't know what to do how to react I just knew the game was tied and I was on second and it was behind me so at that point our confidence was rolling in any, any base hit that David hit like if it was anywhere to left field center right it didn't matter I was going to score no matter what but it gave us as a team it, like we took all the momentum it's like we punched them there and they had no Nothing left. And the best part was after the um, our parents, they were singing it. Yeah, like they were taking the trophy to their, uh, their side of the dugout and everything. But just, just the initial feeling of the game being tied in what did you say, the eighth inning. Um, yep. That's a feeling I haven't felt since that moment. I think, David, it was you who were was hitting behind Miles. Um, you were just behind Miles. You came up that same inning, uh, base hit of your own, scored Miles from second. That's the game-winning run. Uh, what are your recollections of that at that moment? And what do you need to do uh, to get yourself focused for an opportunity like that? Honestly, I was like, oh, this game is over. Um, you know, Miles, Miles did the hard part and tied the game up in one swing with three runs. And – so now at this point, we're tied. So I'm like, okay, I get out. We still got a chance. I get a hit. We're going to win the game. So I really didn't have no pressure. So I was just like, all right, well, I'm just going to I'm gonna go up there. I'm going to get a hit. And with, I think after that, they brought in a little submarine guy. So I'm like, this guy's not going to blow it by me. So I'm just going to let the ball get to me, and I'm just going to drive it to right center. And that's literally what I did. 
So that, you know, that just goes with that mentality that you got to say what you're going to do. And um, my, my approach, I mean, my, um, my thought going up there is just like, man, we are about to win the WAC championship before I even got the hit. Cause whether I, whether, whether I, <laughs> after, after miles tied that game, whether I get the, the, the hit or whoever else, I was just, I just knew we were going to win the game after that. And then I just blacked out after, uh, Miles scored. I don't even remember like the end of the game. Just celebrating. That's great. That's great. Uh, Brian, um, you know the best part about the championships, I think, is when you reflect back on all you've been through, put into every practice, every lifting session. Um, after such a long season, what's that feeling to win the WAC championship? Realize all the goals you've been working for. Man, I felt so relieved. It was like all this stress and pressure that we put on ourselves going into the season and throughout the whole season. It was like, finally, like it's here. Like, I think we all felt so accomplished. Um, I mean, it was a long and exhausting season. Um, but, I mean, there was no better feeling than finally um, saying that we won it all. Um, I mean, we put so much into it and, and – we finally got some out of it. And I think going into um, regionals and everything, it just felt like, okay, this is when the fun begins now. Like, let's, let's show, let's show some, um, all that stress kind of went off and that pressure. And it was like, we, I felt like it was just so much fun. And as we talked about at the start, uh, you know, you were the first one to get to see us be the program really just getting its footing. Um, now you're the WAC champion heading to the NCAA tournament um how rewarding is that to see your career i think um kind of a culmination of of all four years and um honestly it was kind of like what ryan said it was, it was honestly a relief um just because i mean we'd gotten close in 13 gotten close in 14 and then like we were close to being out in 15 so it was more of a relief and then it was cool just because i mean um, for me personally, you know, I'd played with a lot of guys that came before and, and part of the program um, in 09. So it was, it was cool to kind of win it for them. Um, it was also cool just like, you know, four, four years of hard work and, and grinding it out through the fall. I mean, it was all worth it. Um, so, yeah, it was awesome experience. And just to kind of echo what Ryan said, it was it was a relief. It was after we won, just like, all right, cool. Like, we're <laughs> We did it. So, uh, like, like no more, no more doubt or stress or pressure, like he said. Now, on top of the championship, obviously, you guys earned that berth to the NCAA tournament. You stayed relatively local. You're heading down to UCLA um, to play, uh, obviously, one of the power teams in the region. Um, you drop that opening game, but you do get a win against Ole Miss, two to one. That's still the only uh, Division One postseason win in school. Um, David, what do you remember about that game? Uh, what do you remember about that trip to the regionals? Um, and what does it mean for you to have been a part of something like that? Um, it means a lot to me. Uh, Miles, Malik, and I, we made it to the, the, our, our Southern Section Championship in high school, and we, were, we weren't able to, to win. So then winning the WAC Championship and then going on to a regional, you know, that, that meant a lot, especially being the first team in history, baseball team in history to do that. Um, that, was, that was pretty special. Um, I, I don't remember a lot from from that game because it was a low-scoring game other than Harder or Hayden throwing that throwing that gem, of course. But, um, you know, that, that experience was, was something, something special. You know, it was just fun. You know, we went in. Uh, as little Bakersfield playing all these big these big schools and being on on television and it was it was an experience I I'll, I'll, I'll never forget. You touched on it, Hayden. You did throw that game again. That this. What did it mean to you to pitch in that environment on that stage? And and are you running on fumes at this point now? No, I mean I was fine. I think Kernan gave me an extra day's rest. Um, so I think I got like a week a off, um, I think. Um, so I, I, I was fine. I mean, obviously you got the adrenaline of pitching at UCLA against a powerhouse team. I think Ole Miss went to the, the College World Series the year before that. So 
Um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was fine from a physical standpoint. And then as far as like what I remember, um, I mean, I, like David, I don't really remember too much of that day. Um, it was kind of a couple of weird things. Like I remember watching Ole Miss take VP and it was just like, these dudes were monsters and you compared them like they, like their bench guys were like six, six and just like these big dudes. And like, you look at our team, it's like, man, like, Ole Miss is about to rush these dudes. And uh, like, they were putting balls off the top of the, the batting cage at UCLA. And you're just like, Oh man, this is, this does not look good. Um, so that was one thing I remember. And then obviously like Jordy's catch and center, um, robbing the, I think it would have gone out maybe. Um, I just remember the catch. And then, um, like I, me and Joey Sanchez talked, it was like in the ninth inning and he has this play. I think he might've done it, but he threw it in the dirt and then it's on, it's on TV where like I watch the throw and then I, I like glare back at him. I'm like, hey, get your throw up. <laughs> Which, like, as a sure telling a position player, like, how to hit or how to play defense, that's probably, like, the big, like, the worst thing you can do as a pitcher, especially a PO. Um, like, you, you have no right to tell a position player how to hit, how to play defense. So, like, in the moment, I was telling him, like, hey, don't be tentative. Like, if you're going to make a mistake, make an aggressive mistake, like Kern always tells us. But, the, but it came out, hey – get your throw up and like Joey and I still talk about that and it like I feel bad about it because it came out really bad but um but I mean it was I mean it was experience um it I kind of blacked out the whole the whole tournament um it, it was winning that game um against Ole Miss and and getting that first win for for CSUB um so definitely, definitely a rewarding experience. I think that that was the last game I played as a baseball player. So, I mean, good way to go out for sure. Absolutely. Um, Miles, those were also your last games at CSUB. Did you know towards the end of that season you were going to test the draft? And um, looking back now, um, how great was it to end your college career with the WAC championship and now on the regional stage? Um, yeah, that was the best way to go out. Couldn't ask for a better way, especially if he turns that year. Like our goal was to get him to take C or to get him to get CSUB to the regional. And um we did that and we were all like like they kept saying relief was gone or relief was there, no more stress, and we just wanted to pretty much just put Bakersfield on the map at that point. We knew we were playing national. Um, games on TV against these big schools. I think UCLA was ranked number one at the time um, when we played them. And then Ole Miss, obviously, I think they're obviously a powerhouse school too. But our goal then was, all right, let's right, now let's go show these schools that CSUB that we're legit and put ourselves on the map. And we did that, especially when Hayden threw that lights out game. Um, but yeah, and then after the season or going into the season, I knew I had a shot at getting drafted. So it was, <clears throat> it was fun. I mean, it's a great experience. Uh, sometimes I put a lot more pressure on myself than I should have. Cause you're like, dang, I've been working my whole life to get the chance to play, play pro ball. Now I'm a junior and that opportunity is here. And sometimes I had to uh, check myself and just be like, Hey, you need to relax, go out there, play We're we're all out here for one goal, you know, and, our teammate, or my teammates, Kern and the whole coaching staff, we, um, as a collective group, we knew what our main goal was. And it was like no better experience than go out there, win, get a ring, come back. The next year, after I, uh, my first year of Pro Bowl, I think we had the ring ceremony. So having the guys um, all back to get our rings and just um, talk about all the hard work we put in to get uh, that championship. Ryan, when you win a championship like that with your teammates, obviously you're always going to have a special bond with your college teammates at, at that point in your life. Um, but when you win a championship, does it kind of give you guys a special connection, something you can carry forward um, and something you'll never forget? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean I'll never forget that moment. Um, it's something that I cherish to this day. Um, I have my rings 
that that ring set up in my room and I look at it all the time. Um, and every time I do, I, I think about these guys and I think about all the hard work that we put in and um, what drove us to get there. Um, and we would put blood, sweat and tears on that field. So um, I always have love for these guys um, and they'll always have a special place in my heart. So, yeah. That was definitely apparent at uh, this season's alumni weekend. Uh, a lot of you guys were able to come back this spring. David, I know you were there. Um, how great is a weekend like that when you can get back together with teammates who you shared a championship with? Um, and how much fun is it to reconnect and reminisce now that you guys are spread out all over the country uh, pursuing your own careers? Oh, uh, that's real cool, man. That's something special. I always look forward to that because it's like you don't – you know, when you go your separate ways after college, you know, you guys don't always talk all the time or as often as you you probably should. But then when everyone goes back into that dugout or gets around the field, it's like, you know, it's, you're back where you left off. Everyone's the same. Everyone talks to each other the same. There's no, there's no like, bad blood between anyone because it's just a big brotherhood. And even with the guys that I've never met that I've been there before, that uh, were there before me, um, we we act like we know each other, and everyone's just so in the game together. And you know, there's there's fun things going on in the dugout. But um, you know, uh, going there, we as professional players, we like to also you know help the help the the guys that are there now to get to the next level. And we just tell them the things that we're learning now. They ask questions, we answer them so that they can be prepared for when their time comes. Great. Uh, I know Alumni Weekend was a huge success. The current players loved it. Uh, they're off for the summer now. Obviously disappointed that the uh, 2020 season, their final season in the WAC, was uh, cut short. But looking forward to the first season for CSUB baseball in the Big West Conference. Hopefully they can uh, match your guys' success soon. Uh, we're out of time for today, but I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, really appreciated taking this trip down uh, memory lane with you guys, uh, learning a lot about that season and the program um, that you guys have helped build. Uh, thank you so much again for joining us. Good luck with your baseball seasons. Uh, hopefully they will be on the way soon. No problem. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.